this um, acid trip. So I'm just, I'll just go out and say he took some rather bizarre acid trips, and so he was kind of flitty, and so ours we called him Bummer. And uh, he was a rhythm guitar player, and uh, he would write songs, and kind of, not like an open mic, but an open guitar slot where we'd have people come in and play guitar, rhythm guitar with us. And he was one of the people that came in and sat in with us. So as I said, he was never a part of the group, but he did come in and sit in with us. And um, he was a, a competent guitar player. And a nice kid, and just, you know, it was hard for me to understand or believe that he was actually part of that madness, but he was, obviously. But, you know, I can push forward a little bit. I saw him, oh, two years later after the love had become established, and um, we used to leave our doors open, you know. That's the way it was in Hollywood. So I lived on Lookout Mountain. And um, I came home from, we were playing in uh, San Francisco, and I was tired, and I'd come home. And who's in my house but Bobby Boosley sitting on the floor. And, you know, it was okay because, you know, we were friends. I hadn't seen him in a long time. So I said, Bob, how are you doing? And, you know, we tripped. And then I noticed the door to my bedroom was closed. And is there somebody in my room? He said, oh, yeah, I brought my chick with me, man. So, okay, if she crashes for a while. I said, sure, man. And but then uh, after we're talking, you know, this scroungy-looking thing comes walking out of my bedroom. And I said, he said, this is Sadie Glutz. She's a black-haired chick, real skinny. I mean, cadaverous, looked like she was walking dead. And, you know, I'm kind of bummed out now that I see this chick that looks as though she hasn't bathed in years. She's in my bed. And um, so I you know, made it known to him that I wasn't very happy about that. And uh, he started talking to me about um, this group that he was living with up in... Um, some uh, some ranch they were living and uh, it turned out to be that Manson character that he was talking about and the lady Sadie Glutz is skinny with Susan Atkins I later find out but um, he wanted to get away from these people he was kind of frightened and, and talking to me in kind of hushed tones and saying um, that he didn't want uh, Charlie to know that he was you know had stopped by a friend's house and all of that and that Sadie would probably tell him and that he'd get him in trouble. I said, get you in trouble? What the hell, man? Is this guy your father? And he said, no, he's not my dad. It's nothing like that, but um, I'd just rather him not know. And I said, man, you should get away from those people. If it's like that, you should get the hell away now. And if he'd taken my advice, you know, the dream wouldn't have died the way it did in that awful, awful, you know, cataclysm that happened with those people. So I, you know, think a lot of times that if somebody had just found a gig for him, you know, in a group, then that whole thing probably wouldn't have happened because Bobby was the guy that brought all of the other people into that group and introduced him to these people because he was the kind of person that knew everybody. And um, anyway, it's, it's a sad business, this whole thing. But um, as far as having anything to do with the group, he was just on the periphery.